it's important to understand that saturation is a tool, right? M more color, brighter color isn't always better. So you guys want to know about palettes. I'll tell you everything I know. All right. So the first thing that you want to know about my palettes is I make them myself. I've currently made a palette for the three games that I've been working on since I started doing a lot of um, pixel art. So Insignia, Contraband and Apollo all have their own palettes. And I basically make them from scratch as I'm coming up with the concept for the game. The most important thing I can say about palettes before we get started is that creativity is, you know, born out of limitations. Well, palettes are kind of like that. Um, the point is that you don't have access to the whole spectrum. So you'll never be able to communicate every single color. Um, with that said, you're basically trying to pick a series of colors that you can express what you want to express or what makes sense to express for your game. There is a really awesome thread on the Pixel Joint forums that I love to post here. And uh, it is basically the coloring I don't get it thread from Pixel Joint. I will paste the link for this in the description. Uh, for those of you who can see it in my video here, it's, it's right there. So when we look at this, um, a palette today really comes down to an artistic choice, right? It's not always about limitations. Pixel art does have that homage aspect to it. It will always have an aspect of trying to pay respects to a time when there were limitations. But if you're just trying to make some really cool pixel art and you want to start with a palette because you either don't want to think about choices uh, too much, you want to you know have it be simplified or you want to have it look more classical, there are a bunch of reasons why you might want to do it. Um, but you're probably going to, no matter what, <laughs> no matter what the reasons are. So, uh, when we look at these palettes, you can see there's a few things going on here. Um, basically, the rundown for this thread is that you have a subset of colors. They generally have a kind of style or mood associated with them. You can see this palette's really desaturated and all of the colors are desaturated. They look almost like a makeup palette. Um, whereas these ones are very saturated, right? Very bright colors. But none of them are so exclusively um, None of them are so broad that they capture every color, right? They, they are limited in a way. Basically, the exercise that you'll be going through the entire time when you're using a palette is how do I choose colors that let me express as many things as I want to without adding new colors, right? The, keeping to those limitations is what's really important. And a really critical part of that is how to um, bridge different hues, right? So when we talk about hue, we talk about the spectrum. We could think in terms of primary colors from an additive perspective or a subtractive perspective. So RGB is one, CMYK is another. So this is sort of closer to what happens when you have pixels, where the more light you put, the closer to white you get. And this is sort of more like pigments, like paint, where the more paint you add, the more towards black you get because it blocks the light. Now, when we are thinking about how to generate a palette, what it comes down to often is how you sort of bridge and cross these gaps. The concept of color ramps comes up a lot in these um, in this thread. And a ramp is basically uh, this sort of slice of the palette that covers one hue, right? So this sort of like dusty tone here, this earthy tone, that would be one ramp. Um, this sort of pink purple is another ramp. And you have these bridging points where you pick a color that can actually cross both of them. And you can use that to sort of walk along the palette. So I'll talk you through some of my palettes now and how I come up with them and how I work them out. So <clears throat> this one here is uh, basically the Apollo palette. I can load it up and show you what it looks like in a spectrum format. So let's do that really quickly. Okay, so here's the palette for Apollo. And these are the colors. If I take the spectrum here, right? So this is a rain, this is like the full rainbow. This is um, at 
a pretty high level of saturation. We can't look at the full spectrum at any one time because the spectrum is three dimensional, right? There is either way you look at it, whether it's red, green, and blue, three dimensions, or hue, saturation, and brightness, three dimensions. This is um, hue, brightness, and this down here is saturation. So we can look at two of them at any one time, but we can't really look at three at the same time. Um, so I'm gonna put this on a medium high level of saturation and then show you what the spectrum looks like with this palette. So to do that, I'm just gonna take a screenshot basically. And you might not see what's going on here because it might not record my screen, but I'm just capturing this particular side of the window. I'm gonna make a new file and I'm gonna paste it and then with the with my palette selected i'm going to go into color mode indexed what this shows you is a version of the spectrum that my palette can actually capture so these are all the colors in the palette that i can actually express with this and you can see here it is limited right like all of this green blue space here gets abstracted way down to this blue color right all of this nuance gets lost into this all of the different colors at the brightest side just go to white and all of the darkest ones go straight to black. Um, and you can see that where the, sh where the shapes are a lot smaller, that's where my palette is better at expressing those colors. So I have a lot of different blues and purples here expressed and I have a fair few reds and browns and yellows. Green and blue, less subtle it's sort of more general more broad so if we go to a more desaturated version and we try to capture it again what comes out will look different you can see here that the the gray starts eating into the space a lot more and starts sort of creeping into everywhere right because i i don't really have a lot of desaturated colors in my palette they're all kind of saturated or, or around the same level of saturation so all this is trying to express to you, all I'm trying to explain is that you can't have the whole spectrum. You just can't, right? And that's, that's all this comes down to. So your goal is instead, instead of trying to take the rainbow and compress it down into a, into a, a single you know, set of colors, instead start with a color and branch out. Start with something that you like and then only add colors when you need to or try to add colors that work well outwards palettes themselves don't have to be they don't have to be representations of the full spectrum one aspect of how you can deliberately use less of the spectrum is by stylizing right so coming back to this we were explaining before you know there are a lot fewer colors here we don't have like a full red green blue yellow you know purple, indigo, violet, anything like that, right? We've just got a few series of colors and the style inherently means that you don't need to represent certain colors. So we have words for things like this, like sepia, right? Sepia basically means, you know, you only work within a certain color space, that browny, yellowy sort of context. And there's a whole bunch of reasons why we have those names from photography to printing and all kinds of different reasons. The way that these styles are manifested is through what we would now call filters, right? That's what sepia really is. It's kind of like a filter. And if you use Instagram, then this is going to be really familiar to you. A filter really, if you think about it in real life, like a water filter, it takes stuff out right and it only lets certain things come through that's what an image filter is too and you can see here this filter is shifting all of the darker colors towards blue and all of the brighter colors towards yellow this association between cold and hot colors and darker things being cold and brighter things being warm is a pretty natural association for people because in real life hot things tend to go brighter and more warm colored. Our eyes, you know, when we look at black things, we tend to uh, sort of, they tend to become desaturated. Sometimes blue is a nice analogy for that. So there are psychological reasons why this makes a lot of sense. And it's something that I personally do almost in every single palette that I make. 
It's a technique, it's not exclusive. You don't have to do this, but it's something that works. There are other things that they talk about in this, um, in this thread that are really interesting. I, I think the, probably the biggest thing that's gonna happen when you're choosing colors and learning to choose colors is your intuition, if you've never done any kind of paint work before in your life, your intuition will tell you that fire is red, sky is blue, grass is green, metal is gray, right? It's gonna, you're gonna have these colors that you've got in your mind and you'll pick, you'll go to the palette and you'll say, I want blue, that's blue, that's my sky. And you'll just take like the most bright blue because bright looks pretty, right? So you just take that and you'll put that on the canvas. You've probably done this before. I've definitely done this before, but it's gonna look a little bit juvenile. You might end up with something that looks a bit like this, right? Blue sky. My grass is green, green grass. I want to make a sun. Sun's a yellow, right? So yellow sun. Like this is, this is intuitive, right? This is like what you do, of course, because that's the color of those things in your mind. If you've never thought about color before or how light works. In reality, it's not quite like this. It's important to understand that saturation is a tool, right? M more color, brighter color isn't always better. It's a tool. You make a choice, right? And that's all this whole video is about that it's about making those deliberate choices about what you want so if we look at this saturation look how blue that is right looking down at this little dot here you can see that's like super blue the blue that i use in the apollo palette by contrast is almost like a gray so desaturated right it looks this looks like a gray sky now compared to the yellow and the green here but if i start substituting out for the colors that I've got in the palette and I start working in the rest of it, it starts looking more saturated the more you work with it. It looks, this looks like, you know, green grass, blue sky, it looks nice. Invariably when you're creating a palette, you have to sort of stay in one ballpark region for your saturation and you're probably going to in invest in some of those techniques to bridge the gaps. None of them are going to have all the colors and some palettes are gonna have more, more than others. So again, this then comes down to a question of what are you creating your palette for? If it's for a single art piece, then your choices are exclusively for your image, right? If you're creating a seaside image, then you're probably not going to have, you know, these bright red colors, unless it's a sunset. Um, so for this, image here, right? We've got very desaturated colors. We don't have any blues at all. Unless we talk about these very desaturated, there's no green, but that's part of the, the styling that the image is in. You could think of a game that looked just like this. And if you wanted your game to be monotonous, right? One tone, then this would be a really good choice. Games of course have like all kinds of potential and you won't always be making a game that has one tone and so there will be times uh, and explicitly when I'm talking about um, the, the palettes that I make all of my palettes are designed to give me some room some wiggle room right I'm not just sticking to one tone the whole time I want to make something that's got some variety in it so this picture here is from Apollo um, this is supposed to look like an autumn kind of sort of, it's quite lush. It's got a bit of like a, almost a nostalgic feel because it's so desaturated. Um, but then compare that to, to this jungle background. It's different. It feels different, right? But it's the same palette. So that's something that I have chosen to do for this palette to give it a lot of breadth. But you need to make that decision for yourself about what it is you want your palette to do. That's the first thing. I personally believe that the process of creating a palette shouldn't come down to just creating ramps and trying to bridge those ramps. Even though my palettes are arranged in this really like grid-like way, that's really more for my ease of use. And I don't think of myself as an expert, especially if you're a pixel artist who does things like commissions or you have your own style and you just wanna make your own art, you are probably in a much better position to pick a much more limited and much more creatively chosen palette. Ultimately, again, it comes down to you. It comes down to what it is you're trying to, to evoke. So 
I'll talk a little bit about how I create a palette and sort of what that process looks like for me. The palette I come up with right now may not be a complete palette or a very good one, but I want to talk you through my process. So there were, like I said, there were a few techniques that I like to employ, things that I've pulled from that um, thread and from looking at other artists online, that kind of thing. And um, this is kind of, this is my interpretation. What I tend to do is I'll basically start with a saturation. The saturation does a lot. It's something that most of your colors will be bound by. All of these, you can sort of point to the entire palette and say, this is a saturated palette or it's, or it's not a very saturated palette. None of them or very few of them have some colors that are hypersaturated and some colors that aren't because it's very rare in the world for you to see an image where some colors are super saturated and some aren't. That's not a very natural thing to occur. So saturation tends to be something that you can set first and stick within and the rest of the palette will feel cohesive around it. I'll pick a saturation. I usually stick around this, for whatever reason, 50 to 65% mark around here. I don't know why, I just sort of, that's where I go. Cause I don't want something that's too dreary, right? And I don't want something that's like Fisher Price. So I just stick around here. That's just what I do. And um, generally speaking, the, the first ramp I usually do is for whatever reason, I, I usually pick a green or a blue and I'll do it based on like complete arbitrary because I like it, right? So I don't really like this one too much. It's a bit a bit much for me. That's a little, little nicer, maybe a little more desaturated, a bit darker maybe. Something that I could use for grass, right? Because I'm a game developer, I think in these practical terms. So from this point here, right? I've got a color and I like the color. I'll start building a ramp out of this color. In a sprite, you can do that by pressing this little exclamation mark here. That just adds the color. So what I'll do next is I will take this color, I'll shift it, and then I'll add that color. And as I'm doing this, I'm gonna start applying that um, filter that I was talking about before. So in this case, I'm going to shift towards yellow as I go up. And the amount of times you do this is basically that determines like how many hues you have in your palette. And as I'm going down, I'm, you know, hue shifting towards, uh, towards blue. As I'm going up, I'm hue shifting towards yellow. And so now we've got a bunch of colors all on this spectrum. They're all the exact same saturation though. This isn't really complete yet, but it's a really good start. And if we run our mouse across it, we can see this interesting sort of uh, line, this little like arc from here down to there. And I'll try to, I'll try to hit like, um, like the, the true green that I want to hit. So like, I kind of want to like get to this color at some point, right? So if I'm scrolling through here and I don't quite make it, then I can see, oh, okay, this color and this color could be a little further to the left. So you can unlock a color and you can shift it like this to get a bit closer. And this one here, you can shift it over here and then you can lock it back up again and drag through and you can see it, it's a bit zigzaggy now, right? You can see that that line that we were drawing, it's sort of like hooks over. And as I do that, you can actually see that visually, right? You can see how these two colors sort of don't match up with the others. There's sort of, uh, there's like a different a difference there. It's just a question of, how we move through this ramp. And this process of just like shifting and jostling here and there, that's how I create a ramp. That's pretty much the whole process. Um, so it's really handy at this point if you do actually start placing these down on the canvas. And I'm just gonna use the square bracket keys to shift through the hue as I'm placing them. So square bracket, you can see here up there, the index changes. That's left square bracket, right square bracket. So open and close does that. Now I have like a bunch of colors uh, and I want to sort of move through them a bit more nicely. I like these sort of less saturated ones down here more than I like these ones. I, I feel like these have a bit more grit in them. I don't, I don't know. They're speaking to me a bit better. So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to take this color here and I'm going to shift it a little over towards yellow a little bit. Maybe bring it down slightly. And you can see there that now 
falls back in line with like these four really work with each other and these three don't work with them. They work with each other, but not with these three. And so when you scrub across here, you can see there's like a, a line and then a jump right back in the other direction. That's between these two colors. So it's really interesting, right? Just the science of it, you know, the, the actual, your eyes can like see the math, right? So again, I'll probably shift this over towards yellow a bit more. And I've sort of found myself now in a space that I, I'm, that I'm interested in. It's, I'm sort of just exploring a space in the most literal sense of the word. Then I can start trying to, trying to trim this, right? I can say, okay, which colors do I need? And which colors don't I need? I'm looking at these two, they're pretty similar. These two are really similar. Maybe we could delete some of these. So we could just delete that and delete that. And now we've got a bit of a different scenario going on. Maybe we could bring this one a little more down to earth. And you can, you can use whatever method you want to figure this out. But um, the most important thing is that you get there in the end. So really starting to like these colors now. And I want to incorporate a darker version as well. Coming probably towards blue a little more. And you can watch it. You can like hold your mouse down and look at the colors themselves as you do this, which is what I'm doing right now. So I think I had it right around there. So I'm going, you know, blue, green, bright, dark. That's kind of like what my mouse was doing there, right? And uh, I think that's not too bad. It might be a bit of a hard jump. You can see that the, the contrast between these two is much greater than these two. So, you know, maybe we want to bring this up a little bit. That works a little, little bit better. And we've got six greens here. That's pretty good. That's um, not bad. And you can look at the difference between them as you go through and just look at the distance that's covered by them, right? So like the distance between each of them. So this to this, quite a jump. This to this, much less of a jump in terms of brightness. So it might serve us to bring this one up a little bit. Mostly your priority is to be is to favor your perception. If your eye tells you it looks all right, then that's that's good enough, right? If your eye tells you it looks good, but the math is different, you know, maybe you're actually sort of stumbling into some sort of mathematical or perceptual um, feature that you've never noticed before. Like maybe, maybe the brightness curve looks best when it's done like this, where we can actually tell darker colors, you know, apart much better than we can tell brighter colors or something like that. I don't really know, but it's something that, you know, doesn't have to be a certain way. Don't take what I'm telling you now as like a, as gospel. I know that's really difficult. I know you're probably following along as I'm showing you this stuff. Maybe you've got the same greens on your canvas as I've got on mine. Maybe you screenshot the screen and you, you know, derive the colors that way. The point is to have a process that leads you towards stuff that works. That's what you care about, right? So again, um, I've picked these colors. I think they're good colors. I think they'll work really well for a field, for trees. If I wanted to make a blanket change to this, um, one really easy thing I can do in A-Sprite, some of these tips are A-Sprite specific, is I can edit them. I can make adjustments to the brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, or do a sort of color curve. So this, Hue saturation gives me a bunch of sliders and I can actually sit here and shift the whole thing if I want. Most of the time, if you've worked in say a green, that same ramp won't, you can't just shift it, right? You can't just go to pink and say, oh, that's, that's the right ramp for pink because it doesn't work that way. Um, each ramp will have a different curve associated with it. So um, hue, you, can't, you can slide a little bit, you know, but not too much. Saturation, you can definitely get away with doing a lot, so you can make some bigger changes. But again, these should be palette wide for saturation, I think. Um, some ramps will be more saturated than others naturally, but not all of them. And then value is just brightness, overall brightness. So the way that I then think about different, um, different ramps and specifically the extremes of my palette, so the brightest colors and the darkest colors, is I think of it kind of like this. 
I think of it like every color This is like black and this is white Everything converges on black at the bottom end and everything converges on white at the top end Okay, so in my um, in my palette here for Apollo, you can see all of these colors down here are very desaturated. And I can use, uh, let me give you a little quick demonstration. If I have this darkest color here, then I have this color here, which is still, it's got a little bit of blue in it, but it's mostly still on the, on the gray ramp. And then I can come up into, you know, as many different shades as I want. And I have a lot of shades of this monochrome color, but not every ramp has this many shades, just the black and white ramp. And there's a reason for that. So this is my my first ramp and it's got like how many colors? 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 colors. The rest of them only have six. And the reason for that is that they all pick up where these ones leave off. So this black actually finds its way into this blue and then this blue, and then this blue, then this blue, then this blue, then this blue. And then I go straight into the white. So the white, remember before we had those um, sort of like color ramps that we had those bridges here. The way I've got it set up is that at the very top end and the very bottom end, they bridge all the way across. Uh, and that's just something that I tried to, I just was giving that a, giving that a go. <laughs> for the uh, for the Apollo palette. I try different things every time. So I have like very, very simple colors. And the purple actually fits in here as well. I can actually go from blue through purple to get to black. So there's a few different ways that I've done this. Um, and then from here, I actually go into this yellow, so this one bridges. This yellow also goes across down into these uh, browns. And then obviously into this purple again. And then into the black. And then white on the top end. So you can see how this color crosses two ramps, this color crosses three ramps. That's sort of just how I, how I approach that. Um, it's not perfect. Like this, you know, you could probably work in this color up here. Maybe if you really wanted that extra gap, because I definitely feel like this white is, um, it's a big jump between this white and this yellow. So I'm being critical of my own work here, but that's how I, that's how I go through this, right? I just iterate and try to improve next time. Uh, we missed a color. I was wondering why that didn't line up. So this one's like that, and then there's this one here. So here's like an opportunity where I would probably, I would probably consider merging these two, where it's like, oh, they're so close. Can I think of a reason practically? Again, this is a specifically game dev palette, right? So for me, I'm trying to do a pixel art game. I'm, I want to have a lot of diversity in my colors or I want to have specificity in the colors. I don't want two colors that serve the same purpose. That's something that I'm trying to keep in my mind as I'm working. That practical side of it is really important. This process, it's really just about some, getting something that works. It's not about me giving you the definition of like what the best way to do palettes forever is. Uh, because like I said, like this method, it probably won't get you to some of these more interesting, far off, um, concepts for, for, for palette work. This idea here that we've really just got one ramp that moves through the different colors and only like the different hues are used at different brightnesses. Mapping hue and brightness together is like really, really different and it has a really interesting effect, but it's not intuitive. Like I don't think that it makes a lot of sense logically to have red next to purple or blue, this gray steely blue. I can't justify that with words, but it looks really good. All I can say is that they work well, probably because they're of similar saturation and brightness. And if you're working with a very desaturated palette, the hue changes don't make as much of a difference or that they're more acceptable. So that's the best 
guess I can give, but I personally am, I'm not classy enough to be able to create this. This is really expert. Back in, back in Adam land. Um, oh, when, before I move on, one thing that I think is really important is to consider um, saturation in this because we haven't worked with it at all. What I tend to do is saturate in the middle upper third. That's where I saturate. Everywhere else I desaturate. And that's to help this process where the top end and the bottom end bleed into each other. Colors bleed into each other better when they're less saturated. That's kind of like what I just said, right? I guess I just learned something. <laughs> so I tend to desaturate at the top end and at the bottom end so that they blend a little, a little bit more nicely. So I'll take this screen and I'll bring it down and it looks a little, it doesn't look as nice, not, on, not in isolation, but I'm gonna start saturating the ones in the middle and then coming back down and desaturating again. I'm gonna start, and you can see me dragging down to the left here. And this process will allow those colors to merge a little bit better. Again, like you can always come back here and, and play with things until they're right. It's never about like getting it right literally the first time every time. That's, it's not realistic to expect every move you make to be a forward move. Sometimes you just do something and you, it's a, it's a step to the left and then you make an iteration on it and you get it a little bit closer. Uh, yeah, I just repeat this process basically. I start with a color I like in the blue side of things. You know, I pick a saturation that's in the middle somewhere and I, I, uh, I have at it. And uh, you know, it's worthwhile, like I said, to have some sort of image that you're working with here. So, you know, we can pretend this is a kind of, uh, a kind of like um, skyline or something, just to give us some sort of context. If we're trying to get a series of blues now, it's nice to have some sort of context. So I'll do the same thing where I'll sort of shift a bit to the left as I go up and a little bit down towards the darker bluey purpley space as I, uh, as I go uh, down. So up towards yellow, down towards blue, sort of like an S curve here. That's what I'll be working with. You can take your color, you can shift it, press the exclamation mark, shift it, exclamation, shift it, exclamation, and get something that looks pretty reasonable. And uh, I'll flip these. And that's a lot of blues, probably more than we need. Let's delete some of these. And then iron out the difference. And I'll use the shade tool to sort of work my way through this. Okay, so straight away, that's a really big jump. I can bring this back up. So unlock it, bring it up. And then this will probably be a really big jump too. Not so bad. And because I have this context now, I, I can start making judgments that make more human sense, right? I can start thinking about, oh, this, you know, the sky is too dark too quickly or something like that, right? Like these two colors don't work nice, nicely next to each other. If you're just looking over here the whole time, it can get a little difficult to sort of make out the difference and to make those, those choices. And, you know, overall the image doesn't make that much sense, but it's, it's more about building a palette, right? So it doesn't really, it's not super critical. Um, so at this point I've got like, you know, pretty good selection and I think my blues work well with my greens. I think this is really nice actually. Um, again, you know, we could take all of these and we can adjust them however we want. We can change the contrast. We can change the saturation. We can do, we can do whatever we want. So maybe, maybe we like that. Right. And that's how I build my palette. I take a color, I build a ramp out of it. I, um, I play with the different shades. I add and remove colors until it's got a nice distribution. I shift towards yellow at the high end. I shift towards blue at the bottom end. And then when I'm happy, I start playing with saturation for each shade. That's pretty much it. So these ones here in the middle, I might saturate a little more. These ones on the top end, I might desaturate. Just comes down to what you want to do. And it helps to 
really try these in different contexts. So if I wanted to flip this, right, and think of this as like a beach scene, like what is, what does this look like now as water? Pretty good, actually. <laughs> And since, since I'm here, it's like, okay, let's think about how we build like a yellow. Like, what does that look like? Maybe I start with this color would be a better yellow. And then I'll work my way down. Now, one thing that's going to get you that you should think about or be aware of is that when I, when I said shift towards yellow at the top and shift towards blue at the bottom, what does that mean for yellow? Like, how do you shift towards yellow from yellow or towards blue from yellow? Does that mean that dark yellows become green? Right? Does that mean I have to go through this space as I go down? That's up to you. The answer is no, you don't have to do that. You can actually come back the other way towards blue through like a warm space, right? Through red, if you want. You can desaturate to make that less of a, of a factor. There's a lot of different tricks you can apply to sort of get your way through that space. Um, for me, what I tend to do, again, is come back to practicality. So I'll take something that I know I want, and then I'll think of it that way. So this yellow, I went towards brown because I, I do a lot of trees, right? Wood, trees, leather, um, anything that, you know, dirt, I want those shades in there, so I took this opportunity to go from yellow through to brown. But you can also see that my red hue goes towards yellow at the top as well, it goes towards that orangey yellow color. So thinking about your, your context, what you want to, sh to convey in your palette will help you make those critical choices where you can't have every color to build your ramps in a way that makes the most sense for you. How's that sound? Is that pretty good? That's how I build palettes. That's what I do. Hey pal, thanks for watching. And thanks most especially to the patrons and Twitch subs who support this channel and my game dev project Insignia. To find out more, click the links in the description below. And uh, if you like this video, tell YouTube by clicking the like button and then YouTube will tell me and then I'll make more videos. That's nice.